Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> to, uh, to say that a lot's going on would be a bit of an understatement in this week. And uh, as we learn in rabbinical school, you know, one of the first things in your homiletics class is don't talk politics from the bima. But to not talk about what has been going on this week would be to ignore something that is affecting every single human in the room, for good, for bad. As I have said before, and mean, I will leave commenting on the election itself, what went right, what went wrong, whether this is a realignment, a blip, it's the economy, it's identity, whatever that is, to people smarter than I. But I want to point out at the very beginning one thing that I do know. It is incredibly important for Jews to be involved in the politics of this country. And so I want to take a second and I want to thank everyone in this room who volunteered for a campaign, who knocked on doors, who made phone calls, who worked the polls, everyone who participated in the election this week and the, in the weeks before. We won't make you stand but I want to thank each and every single one of you. Our country is safer for Jews when Jews are involved. And our country is more reflective of Jewish values when Jews are involved. It is incredibly important that we bring all of our hearts and souls to the process of being members of this nation. And while we acknowledge that we have all been through something this week that affects each and every one of us, we acknowledge that many people here bring different emotions into the room. Some are happy, some are sad, some are angry, some are hopeful, some are all of those things at once. This election will affect us for years to come. And as we sit here, we know that the world has not let up on the Jewish people either. While it seems like hopefully we have avoided being scapegoated in the American political spectrum and, and landscape here, the attacks yesterday in Amsterdam strike us and shake us to our core. One of the things that stands out to me in that and in many things that happen is just the unmitigated vitriol and anger that people seem to have. I mean, I gave a whole sermon about it on Yom Kippur, but it didn't fix it, apparently. <laughs> rabbi Schwarzman had this wonderful idea that the rabbi should be available on election day to just talk if anyone wants to talk. And uh, one of the Chazan's family friends is a reporter and wrote it up in the Jerusalem Post, which was lovely and sweet, and we had some great conversations here. But I forgot to tell the young rabbi, don't read the comments section. And if you do, they're just so angry and mean and mean-spirited. And this is something that we have to try to leave behind. Whether we are happy in this moment, be kind to those who are sad. And if you are angry and sad in this moment, as we go through the five stages of grief and we hit anger, be careful with how we vent that anger and with whom we vent it. Because we're all going through a lot in this place. And we're all going to be going through a lot in the days and weeks and years ahead. And there's something that I think we can learn by looking at Avraham and the story that we read this morning. And there's three moments I want to highlight and see if this feels like you in this time. So Avraham is chosen by God. By God shows up seemingly out of the blue and says, Lech Lecha, you have to go, uh, Levi, as you spoke beautifully, right? You have to go, go to a place I will show you, leave your home, do all this. And the rabbis sort of wonder, well, is this just God kind of did eeny, miny, mo and picked a human and said, you, you're going to be the founder of this new religion? And mostly the rabbis agree the answer is no. Avraham had intuited already some kind of truth about the world. He knew that there was only one God. He understood that that was the right way to go. And the rabbis later say that actually that 
one foundational belief, right, in only one God is actually the beginning of ethics in this world. And so Avraham is alone in this world, the only person who knows that there is only one God and that that is the right way to believe. And so God shows up and says, Lech Lecha, you have to go to this land and I will make you a great nation and your children will be numerous and all these wonderful things are going to happen, but it does not happen right away. And I have been thinking a lot about this time period where Avraham knows what's right, he believes it to his core, and the rest of the world isn't ready for that yet. And there might be people here who see what happened on Tuesday as a repudiation of deeply held beliefs and values. There might be people here who don't. But if you do, it might be that we have to shepherd those values a little bit longer until the world is ready for them. Avram is called Ha'ivri, the Hebrew, and he's called that because, say the rabbis, he stood on one side of the world and uh, the whole world stood on the other. And it might feel like that for some people here. But we should and can take solace in knowing that believing in your values, holding them true, being true to who you are, hopefully you can bring others along with you. And the rabbis have another midrash about this moment, this lech lecha, when God shows up and says, hey, by the way, I'm God, I'm the one true God. And they say it's like a person who's walking down the street and they see that there's a house on fire, and it's burning. And they say, is there an owner to this house? Like, is there anyone who's going to put this out? And an owner uh, shouts from the window, yeah, hey, it's me. I own the house. Come help me put it out. So too, say the rabbis, Avraham noticed that the world was on fire. And he said, is there any owner to this world? Like, how could it get to this place? And God shows up and says, Lech Lecha, hey, yeah, it's me. I, own, I started everything, but I need your help to help me put it out. And it doesn't take a lot of looking. And it doesn't matter who you supported to see that the world around us is a little bit on fire. I mean, literally, it's a little bit on fire. It was 80 degrees this week. And there are issues that we are going to need to be vigilant about in the years ahead. The environment doesn't care who's in control of the country. We need to stand up for each other and the planet. There is an incoming president who has extolled the virtues of Nazis. We are going to need to be vigilant for each other. There is violence on some college campuses, and there is violence in the world against Jews, and we are going to need to stand up for one another. And the lesson of Avraham is if you see that the house is on fire, then you have to be a part of helping to put it out. So vigilance is something that we are all going to need ahead. When you see the fire burning, get friends and let's help put it out together. And then at the end of our Parsha, there's this scene that kind of gets skipped over a lot with Lot, Avram's nephew, and Avram have a fight, or their shepherds have some kind of fight. And it says in the Torah there that the land was not able to sustain them any longer, and they were not able to shevet yachdav. They weren't able to sit to dwell yachdav together anymore. And so there's this moment where then Lot and Avram part ways. And the rabbis kind of wonder what's going on in this scene. And the, Rabbi Ibn Ezra, one of our great commentaries, says, no, don't think that it's that there wasn't enough grass and that they couldn't, you know, like have their sheep next to each other. And he sees something in the language of yachdav. He says, to say that you can't dwell like side by side would be yachad. That's the word you would use. Yachdav doesn't mean to be down together. It means to act as one. And he quotes many places in the Torah where that people answer yachdav, it means to answer with one voice or to act as one. And so in this read, it wasn't that um, Lot and Avraham couldn't be in the same room. 
It was that they were no longer on the same page. And I want to name and acknowledge that in this past week and in the month, these past months, that within the Jewish community, within our own community, we have been split. I haven't been with all of you for presidential elections in the past, but I can imagine perhaps if trends are what they are, more so than in the past, the, the Jewish community has felt a push and a pull and a separation. And like Avraham and Lot, we might be worried that we can no longer act yachdav as one. But I want to point out that even though Lot and Avraham part ways in this moment, and Lot takes his cattle and goes one way, and Avraham takes his and goes another way, in the very next chapter, Lot gets taken captive in a war. And Avraham doesn't wait a second, but rides to his rescue and saves him. And even though there are ways in which we disagree, and as I've been saying for a year, that's okay. We should disagree. These things are important. These things matter to us deeply. We should have deeply held values, and we should feel comfortable sharing those values here and talking to one another, and that's good. And when one of us is in trouble, we ride to the rescue. We do not forget that there is so much that connects us and our people, and that whether we feel like we can get along together or not, we are one and we are connected, and we owe it to one another to be there for each other. And so in the days and weeks and years ahead, some people are going to be happy, some people are going to be sad, some are going to be angry, some are going to be hopeful, but all of us, all of us need to commit to staying together here. And all of us, all of us, are going to need to care for one another. We're going to need to double down on caring for each other in this room, on caring for our people, and caring for the people around us. That is how we are going to make this country and this world a better place, regardless of who is in charge, if they're helpful, if they're hurtful, we will be vigilant. But we will also be vigilant for each other to see what we need, and to be there to lend a hand. Shabbat Shalom.